Hello, welcome to your physiology lecture video series. These videos are intended to introduce you, the student, to the material before a formal lecture and serve as a preview or pre-reading on the day's lecture topic. These videos will highlight key details for each lecture that each student must know to master the material. When learning physiology, you are unlikely to be required to regurgitate facts, but rather to apply those facts within a clinical context. Many of you remember from undergrad that the key to physics was understanding the governing laws and learning how to manipulate the system or equations. Cardiac physiology will be much in the same. Our cardiovascular system is essentially designed as a pump between the venous and arterial side. We think of the product of this pump as the cardiac output. Mathematically speaking, we calculate this value as the product of the heart rate and the stroke volume, or the amount of blood per beat. This is usually described in liters per minute. If we were to manipulate the equation, then increasing one will increase the cardiac output. The two sides of the pump are not created equal though. The arterial side is quite muscular and largely governs the property of resistance. The artery has a thicker tunica media, or muscular layer, and a smaller lumen that is important for the maintenance of pressure. The veins are thinner, have valves, are compressible, as well as distensible. This venous side is a large reservoir for volume and is under significantly less pressure than its arterial partner. This large venous reservoir can be used as a primer for the pump or heart to increase the stroke volume when the body senses the need for an increased cardiac output. We are all familiar with taking a patient's blood pressure, and as you've likely come to realize, here in Eastern North Carolina, Carolina, we live in an area with quite a high prevalence of hypertension. When taking a blood pressure, it is reported as the systolic over diastolic value, reported in millimeters of mercury. Today's lecture will take a look at these values from a systemic viewpoint, whereas tomorrow's lecture will focus on the pure cardiac aspects. But what goes into a blood pressure? The pressure in our cardiovascular system is regulated on a few levels. First off, volume is regulated at the level of the kidneys. It can be regulated in the form of urine or lost passively through sweat or respiration. The pump regulates cardiac output as a function of heart rate and stroke volume. We talked about this earlier. The stroke volume is one of the main determinants of the systolic pressure. This is affected either by the preload, valve integrity of the heart itself, or the contractility of the myocardium. The nervous system controls the artery's luminal diameter that the heart works against. The force that the heart must overcome to open the aortic valve is termed the afterload. When blood is ejected from the ventricle, there is resistance to flow. This can be based off of the compliance of the vessel and the viscosity of the blood. The resistance is the major determinant of the diastolic pressure. Finally, the venous side can increase the preload to increase the pressure within the system or act as a reservoir for holding on to volume on the venous side, which could reduce the volume on the arterial side, thereby reducing blood pressure. As you work through these cardio modules before class, pay special attention to the vocabulary terms. This will be your first introduction to the material. Physiology is like a language. In order to master it, you have to be able to hear it, speak it, and even read it on a graph. When these terms come up again in lecture, see how they fit within the overall picture. After class, make sure that you're clearly able to articulate their significance and how certain pathologies may present. I hope you enjoy these videos and it improves your experience with lecture-based learning. Thank you for watching.